Are we allowed to swear? Yeah, please. Are we? Yeah. Great. You want f***ing up the nose holes. Yeah, yeah. I quite like that. I yeah. think that's a good one. You look like Queen Victoria shoved nettles up her She sucks five <laughs> uh, a week men of them. <laughs> I always love your great big f***ing onion. It was Johnny Sweet's script that we saw. I think Studio Canal sent it to South of the River. I can't remember quite how it all happened, but I remember reading it. It was going, this is, this is ridiculous. That's, it's great. And it's true. That yeah. was my favourite thing about it, that it all happened. I guess I was just nosing around um, 1920s um, neighbourhood stories. And um, it was just very funny. It was a very funny story about... Um, language really and the letters were very the original letters were very funny and they're all in there lot, lots of them are in the film and it was also um it had a bit of substance to it as well a bit of weight and felt like there was a sort of sadness underpinning how ridiculous it all was the thing about a great script is you can tell when somebody's researched uh, i mean also i'm old enough to have had great grandfathers and uncles who were of that generation so I knew I knew what was going on I'm a, one of the sort of last of the Edwardians I grew up in a in you know in South London when there was still quite a few of those blokes around you know from by point of view and people and certain attitudes you know. I hate her you don't like the idea of me leaving this house do you no we're good mates anyway so going to work with a friend is really fun and just knowing that we could just swear at each other was going to be great yeah it was trying not to laugh in between. Yeah. yeah. That was the most of the work. Well, it was just, yeah, great fun. Yeah. People were ejected from set for, yeah. for their... For, Raucous for laughter. But also, I think, in the, in the more actually, emotional Actually, namely, for, uh, here's another fun fact. The one time I actually really had to not only tone somebody down, but I did actually have to ask him to leave the set, was Olivia's husband... Who was? Were and, you with and, me that and day? And producer on the film, yeah. And producer on the film. I know. I was trying to l lower his status for a no, moment. You there. really should have known better. <laughs> anyway, he was behind the monitor with me watching a scene, and Olivia was utterly brilliant in that particular take, in in every take. But in that particular take, he just forgot his job for a second and just laughed out loud, which you can't do because it's then recorded. And she, of course, knew it was him and asked him to be remo removed from set, which yeah. was a brilliant moment. It's German. Thea Sharrock, who is a director, is a fan, only a fantastic director. She creates a wonderful, very creative and very fun atmosphere. And she's very, very organised and on top of it. So it was a very, very well run, but a very joyful set to be on. And also the people involved in it, that, you know, everybody is was pleasant to be with. So afterwards, in between shots, it was a nice place to be. Yeah, I got to turn up to work and see Timothy Spool in action, you know, so I went home very happy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> when, I, when I'm very disappointed. No, <laughs> never. <laughs> I can't believe he's playing such a horrible old arsehole in this. But he's so twinkly with that as well. Yeah. You can see, really. He, some, I guess people who are the nicest really need to get something off yeah, their chest too. Out. Yeah. And it's so, but he's, I mean, he's a legend. Yeah. He's literally a living legend. Yeah. And he's, I love his stories. Oh. The whole, I mean, being, you know, in the green room with this whole cast and Eileen Atkins telling amazing stories, Timothy Spall particularly talking about his boat. Do you know what? When you've got brilliant actors, they understand it so uh, in the way that you need to be understood in a way that they can both let loose and be unafraid to be funny. And But at the same time, they always knew where the important underlying um, themes were. And we were very lucky to have a set that had such experienced actors. Nothing was difficult to discuss. So those kind of sensitive areas were, they were always easy conversations, things that you might imagine being quite difficult. They were so receptive, weren't they? Yeah. And they always understood that the tone of the movie is, is a really delicate balance in this film in particular. So all of those discussions were, were had constantly to make sure that we all felt we were telling the same story. I suppose there's the parallel, you know, uh, of the, the um, poison pen letters, which is trolling, modern day trolling, which is jealousy, isn't it? And uh, when you say something cruel about someone, it's, I think it, it comes from a place of 
I know, an anxiety or, a, you know, something's not working well for you and you're saying something horrible about someone else. Uh, I, I hope the modern audience will realise how shocking it was and we should still be shocked. We shouldn't take it for granted that if you're going to, you know, someone will say something unkind about you. You shouldn't. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't happen. And also, if you're jealous about something in somebody else, go f find it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, don't become like look after me yourself. and, and yeah. look after yourself. And if you're genuinely jealous about that, you probably need to feed that part of yourself up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Dear Edith, you foxy ass old whore. Carry on. You really are a tricksy old f***er. And you're a sad, stinky bitch. In the end, I think it's just jealousy. So, you know, when you first see Gladys, she's very buttoned up, uh, very serious, seeming, very like, you know, has to do the right thing and very proper. And that feels very aligned to Edith. But I think when you see her with Rose, you realise both of them are kind of lonely and outsiders in this community, in a way. What could Edith learn most from Rose, do you think? It, well, I think everything. Darts. Dar darts. <laughs> <laughs> How to dart, a, dart through a potato. <laughs> I think the first time Edith sees Rose, though, I, I think for her, because that's what life is, that's what love is, that's what I should be doing. How is she doing that? How does she break free? Um, I think she could learn everything from Rose. Uh, it's just a matter of breaking free from that sort of coercive, controlling behaviour is... As you know, we all know, it's not easy. And she had to go to extreme lengths to get away from her dad. If only she and Rose, Rose could have gone, come on, we're f***ing off. <laughs> <laughs> Love thy neighbour and I tried, but... I'll get you in the ball, sir! She's heinous. I think the year when Olivia Coleman, before she said Coleman, I went, yes. <laughs> mm. And I'd just seen them both together not long before that in that wonderful film, The, the uh, Lost Daughter. Yeah, I did and, too. It was amazing. And I thought they were so, you know, they're playing. They were playing, they playing the same character. I mean, they're undoubtedly two very, very brilliant, brilliant actresses. And they also happen to be very, very brilliantly lovely people, which is an added bonus. And they have great chemistry. Yeah. You know, I think they have a real genuine love and friendship in real life. And I think that translates to their chemistry on screen. So it makes it really explosive and busy and fun to watch yeah. them on screen together. And that last scene together where you yeah. see there is even all that terrible uh, discord between them there, there's a kind of still connection. a kind of connection yeah. there. I love her even. <laughs> That's true. We do love each other even more. And she's generally the best person, actor, fun person to hang out with oh. and the naughtiest person <gasps> She is. <laughs> She's way no truth than me. <laughs> I don't think that's no, true. That's maybe not. We had such a lovely time. Yeah, yeah I think it, we've we've learned that we we need to put this in our rider to work together at least once a year. Yeah.